Hi. Hi. Um, hi, Iris, and hi. Um, hello, everyone. I'll just wait a few, few moments before we start, if that's okay. Okay. Great. Well, um, let's start. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this Q&A with a very special guest um, joining us from Istanbul. Um, Iris Mozilar um, is a um, fashion model, performer, um, and a trans feminist, uh, vegan L LGBTI plus activist. Um, she is also the subject of um, the documentary Iris, which um, was screened as part of the uh, which we are currently screening as part of the Queer Candy Festival. Um, before we start, let me very quickly flag up uh, that there are two other Queer Candy events happening today, another Q&A on Instagram and a panel event on Zoom. Just check out um, QTI Coalition um, Instagram or Facebook or go to Queer Candy Festival's website. Um, my name is Misha Yakovlev and I, I, I will be kind of your host today. I'm pursuing a PhD in film and television studies at the University of Warwick and together with another friend um, and member of the Queer Asia Collective, we um, actually curated a special selection of three films for the festival. Um, these films are from Lebanon and Palestine. If you haven't seen them, head over to the festival's website and check out the amazing selection, which is live until tomorrow evening. Okay, um, thank you so much for being with us, um, Iris. Um, Hi. <laughs> or maybe tell me how I should pronounce your name properly, sorry. Uh, Iris, Iris or Iris. Iris in Turkish, Iris in English pronunciation. Okay. You can uh, tell I Iris. I, I also like this pronunciation. Okay, um, we can do Iris then. Um, well, thank you so much for joining us. And um, could I ask you to start by telling us a little bit about what inspired you to make this documentary? And uh, what was the process like for you? Okay. Uh, I have a classmate, uh, which name is Ceren. Ceren's partner, Volkan. Volkan, tell her, tell her about a final uh, thesis. Uh, to graduate it. Uh, he <clears throat> graduating uh, cinema television and uh, he will be graduated after the offer the documentary film and asked to do Jeran and Jeran of, uh, offered me to Volkan and Volkan and I uh, connected um last year like these days also uh, i think november uh, volkan and chadash came from the izmir to istanbul uh, to talk in, talk talk about uh, the documentary film uh, i was so excited because uh, a documentary film about my life uh, is also my dream i always uh, think about uh, I wish someone shoot my documentary film <laughs> and then Volkanan Chadash told me about the project and I was so excited about it uh, then uh, two weeks later we start to shooting the documentary film <clears throat> um, Firstly, uh, I asked my two, uh, three friends, Cengiz Yildirim is my best friend and my manager. Uh, they are watching this uh, live now. And I asked to Salih Topçoğlu, which is a great model in Turkey and also the Euro. And I asked to my inspiring woman, my muse, Gaia Suakyol, and they all accept that uh, for the talking in my documentary film. And then we started the shooting. Uh, the shooting takes 
one week and sometimes in outdoor, sometimes in my home, uh, sometimes a coffee uh, or something where we try to uh, make a lot of places in documentary, uh, sometimes a party maybe. Uh, and this process is like that. Uh, and it was so exciting for me because it my, it's, it's my first documentary film and it's, it was my first film also. And I love Volkan and Chadash. We have a synergy between us. Uh, Volkan and Chadash also a high school friend. Uh, and I think that's it. <laughs> Yes, what you say is um, very interesting, I, I, and I think as a viewer, we could really tell that you were telling your story and kind of the way you were telling it with the director was almost very on your own terms. And I personally enjoyed seeing your friends and the different, you know, settings, uh, which we got to see kind of a sn snapshot of your life. Um, I guess one of the questions I was quite interested in is um, you, you talked about mythological and kind of um, uh, spiritual uh, spirituality and I think there were some sim mythological or spiritual symbols maybe which um, the, the necklace an Egyptian an ancient Egyptian necklace I think you were was what looked like an no Egyptian... no no it's not from ancient Egypt it's uh, Zoratari Zoratarianism I think oh. I, I, yes. I couldn't uh, pronounce it Zoratarianism, I think, is true. Zardushluk in Turkish. Turkish. Yeah. Zor Zoroastrianism. Oh, that's... Zoroastrianism. Yeah. So maybe could you tell us a little bit more about kind of what these objects mean for you and what spirituality and mean for you? Okay. Uh, firstly, sorry my for uh, bad English. <laughs> I can uh, speak slowly. <laughs> Uh, first, we see a uh, uh, Sanskritish uh, symbols. It means on mani padmehum. Uh, means that uh, a pearl in the lotus means it's about compassion and love. The, it's a mantra also, and um, it's it's on my, it's on my wall. And then uh, we see a necklace, Ahura Mazda, Zoroastrianism god, uh, because I'm Kurdish. My ethnicity is Kurdish and Alevi. Uh, and it's give me a connection about my cultural ethnicity also. And we see a, a necklace about Pir Sultan Abdal, uh, Pir Sultan Abdal is a uh, special figure in uh, Aleviism, Aleviism, Shiism, or something. <laughs> I don't know his English. And we see tarot cards. Uh, I also reading tarot and uh, reading fortune teller telling or something uh, spiritual things. <clears throat> and my name and surname is from mythological things. Uh, also, I'm neo-pagan. <laughs> I believe this god. I believe uh, these mythological things uh, as a metaphor. Metaphor about the beginning of the universe, beginning of the life, uh, beginning of the people's life, something else. I believe that it's they are a metaphor to learn us something about our lives, our our roots. Uh, that's why spirituality and mythology uh, important in my life. And I think that's it. <laughs> I don't know what to say. No, that's very. Uh, again, that's very interesting, and it's very interesting how you bring out certain aspects of your identity through the mythologic, 
mythology and spirituality in the film, but also now certain aspects which might have not been as clear to the viewer, for, for me, for example. And I guess that brings me to my next question is, um, um, what really struck me is how you use um, activism and your modeling career like to achieve visibility and in general how um, your activism is about visibility. Can you tell us um, just a little bit about how you um, got into um, kind of more broadly how you got into modeling because I think we saw some clips from uh, pop songs with you in it and uh -huh. um, why do you think it's important for you and for the broader trans and LGBTI plus communities in Turkey? Uh -huh. Firstly, uh, I want to say that <clears throat> it's hard to getting a mainstream model, uh, mainstream performer, mainstream uh, theater player or something for the trans people in Turkey. Uh, also, I'm not mainstream in Turkey. <laughs> Uh, the big deal is my gender identity as a trans woman, as a bisexual trans woman. And I try to, it, modeling is my dream. Uh, when, I'm, when I was in high school, I al always want to do this job. And uh, when I moved to Istanbul from Mersin, where I was living, uh, I started to uh, my HRT and then started to uh, modeling and performing uh, like video clips or something. Uh, first, my first uh, shooting experience is Guy Suakyol's uh, video clips, İstikrar Layal Kikattir, Consistent Fantasy is Reality means. Uh, and the song give me a strength uh, and I love Guy Suakyol about his, uh, her music or her art, her opinion. Uh, she's always inspiring me. And the modeling with an activist, um, it's a little bit hard. Uh, because um, as an activist, uh, you have an opinion. You you are uh, you give a resistance to the system or something else. And uh, sometimes the agencies or some things doesn't give, doesn't accept that because uh, uh, wait us to. Um, non-political peoples also just a model just a job uh, i'm not into it into this because uh, activism it's a big deal in my life also trans activism feminism veganism uh, has a big deal really and it's an important thing that i i'm in a fashion industry because I'm a trans woman and the 10 years ago in Turkey, it's too hard to uh, being in fashion industry as a model, as a trans woman model. Uh, and I'm so glad about it because I, I, I, I gave a, a visibility. Uh, I gave a visibility and it's too much uh, important for me and I combinate my activism, my feminism, my performing, my uh, modeling. I, I, I combinate all of them and I love it. <laughs> That's really great. Um, thank you for that. Um, could I ask you a question which I saw somebody ask uh, in, the, in the comments to, the, to our live? Okay. Uh, they were asking, um, what, who is your favorite model? And maybe I want to add to that, when you were growing up, did you have any sort of models you looked up to or maybe some tr foreign trans models or, yeah. Yeah. Um, my favorite model uh, is 
queer models in Turkey. I, for example, Salih Topçuoğlu. It's my favorite models in, in my favorite models. And Çağla Şikel, she's a mainstream model uh, in Turkey. Uh, maybe you know that. I don't know. Um, and also, I think that's it. The, the two of them is my favorites. Uh, and also, um, I'm my height is 190, and it's <laughs> I am the uh, tallest model, uh, tallest woman model in Turkey. <laughs> It's hard to get a job when you are tall, <laughs> tall woman. And uh, it the the the tall woman model uh, give me uh, a strength about being a model in a um, industry. Uh, I think that's it. Um, Great. I lose your screen. Sorry. Oh. Sorry. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I'm not sure. Sorry about that. Um, yes, what you say is very interesting. And I guess um, it also brings me to my next question. You say that it's quite difficult being a tall woman model um, in Turkey. And in the film, you also mentioned having some financial difficulties at some point when your uh, family stopped supporting you, I think. Um, mm -hmm. And... Uh, could you tell us, is kind of lack of financial security one of the barriers trans individuals face when it comes to coming out? Is uh, getting employment difficult for kind of visibly trans people, if that makes sense? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I told about that my parents, my family uh, cut the economic sources of me and uh, I was homeless. I was poor, I was broke or something. Uh, um, it's hard to live in Turkey because uh, minimum uh, wages, <laughs> 2,300. Uh, and it's, so, it's too low to Turkey because everything is so expensive. Everything is so expensive. Um, and also the hormones, for example, too expensive. and the government doesn't take them, our hormones. Um, uh, coming out is a hard, was a hard experience to me because I said my family cut the economic sources on me. And um, <clears throat> I think this is the uh, big problem of trans people in Turkey because some of our uh, families reject us when we are coming out. And uh, this is the big problem. Uh, uh, some of us is uh, workless because they are trans or they are visible trans. Uh, it's hard to get a job if you are trans in Turkey because I accept that uh, Turkey is a Middle Eastern <laughs> country, not, not an Europe country, I think, uh, because the cultural things, the uh, transphobia or something, and the um, government, uh, the conversationism, and that we are a Middle Eastern country, and not an Europe country, I think. Um, when I came out, uh, I started to uh, looking for a job, which is a non-transphobic places, restaurants or bars. And you know, it also part uh, when they say we are not transphobic, maybe you can see the transphobia in this place or it is work. Um, and also, I also uh, have a economic warriors, worries uh, because um, uh, because of the pandemia, uh, I <laughs> I cut my job 
because uh, there's a pandemic, <laughs> that's it. And uh, I have economic problems about it. And, and I'm also a student in Mimar Sinan Fine Arts University. I studying urban design, urban planning, and it's, it's too, too, too much things in my life. And I, w I try to make them all at the same time. And it's uh, really hard to me. Um, most of trans people uh, can't uh, go to the university because they are gender identity. But we have in Turkey, uh, transgender doctors, transgender lawyers, transgender architects, and also transgender women, uh, urban planner, or something. Uh, we have an improvement, but it's it's a big deal for us. We, we try to, with our nails, uh, to get this situation, but this situation, it's not good, I think, for the trans people, especially visible trans people. Well, I, I mean, one thing I can say, it's so brave of you to kind of be so visibly out there. And I think that's what some people were saying in the comments, and you are really kind of an inspiration, I think, probably for trans people in Turkey, but also for other people, for being so kind of brave and open about it. And um, you mentioned that... Um, just now that sometimes it's difficult for trans people to go to university. So my next question, what I want to ask um, is, what is the situation like with gender markers in documents? And um, in Turkey, um, can you change your kind of ID? Can you change your name? And um, you also mentioned experiencing harassment uh, kind of from the police and on the streets, is this something you have also experienced at work or at university from kind of staff or...? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, firstly, maybe I can uh, talk about the sexual excitement process in Turkey, how it's uh, hard. <laughs> um, firstly, uh, it's my experience. Firstly, uh, generally, uh, trans people uh, go to do uh, um, university hospital and uh, a psychiatry, psychiatrist and then psychiatrist uh, follow the process for, uh, for a, a minimum uh, six months and then uh, the psychiatrist uh, send our documents to the endo endo endocrinologist and the endocrinologist uh, take our blood test and uh, see the blood test re reports and then we start uh, to hormone and it takes at least uh, six months then uh, we completed the one year in hospital uh, if psychiatrist uh, say okay uh, we started to uh, give a letter for case uh, and with a lawyer um, and then we go to the six branches uh, endocrinologist psychiatrist gynecologist urologist and uh, I, I forgot about that <laughs> the uh, two other branches and we go to the branches and take a report that we are trans <laughs> we, <laughs> we, uh, we try to uh, tell uh, that psychiatrist, I am trans. I am trans. <laughs> we, um, uh, for example, if you are a bisexual, don't tell the psychiatrist. It's a trick. Because uh, uh, psychiatrists think that the all transgenders, trans women and trans men are heterosexual. But it's not like that. <laughs> uh, sex, uh, sexual orientation and gender identity is different things. For example, I said that I always want to uh, play with Barbies in my, in, when I was six years old or something. I don't want to uh, play with the boys or something. We all uh, said that 
the general woman uh, square we have in Turkey and psychiatrists want to see that uh, see that general woman the the social woman they want to see that and then we give a letter to for the case with a lawyer and to get a permission that um, sex reassignment surgery and then uh, we you can uh, get a surgery whenever you want uh, most of us uh, private most of us um, want to get a surgery in uh, private hospitals uh, all private clinics uh, or Thailand or something abroad because uh, in Turkey sex reassignment surgeons surgeries it's not really good as a mm. uh, private clinics as a Thailand because uh, in medicines education they don't learn they don't give a lesson about sex reassignment surgeries or the HRT or something uh, and then we get the surgery and give again a letter to the case uh, to change our um, ID card our name or uh, female or male uh, place to change them and that's it <laughs> and it's finished I think but uh, transphobia it's is not finishing when we get the ID cards not not um, I think that's it yeah no that's really interesting to know just one uh, short question to follow up on that so I guess you have to, do you have to pay for everything kind of for the assessments at the so yeah okay um could could i um kind of going moving on to something a little bit more um positive kind of positive um in the documentary we had the privilege of meeting some of your friends and you talked about them already um but uh, could you tell us a little bit more about them and what do these relationships mean, mean to you and um, kind of more specifically would you say that um, um, young people in Turkey or in Istanbul are becoming more open-minded how was your kind of social experience if that makes sense okay, okay. firstly uh, <clears throat> there was so much transphobia uh, in Turkey uh, there is a hate crimes in Turkey. We still have that. Um, <clears throat> in uh, <clears throat> LGBTI plus uh, activists community in Turkey, it's too little. And we know all of them. We know each other. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> uh, but uh, being a LGBTI plus activist doesn't mean that uh, they are not transphobic, they are not misogynist. We still have in our uh, inside these this, uh, phobies and misogynies. Um, for example, uh, especially trans folks, uh, we are not enough uh, visible in LGBTI plus community, uh, we still uh, have a problem about visibility um, because uh, cis people, <laughs> uh, cis people's problems, cis people's um, letters, cis people's documents or something more visible. They don't, uh, it's hard to get a, a place in LGBTI plus community. It's, it's not, doesn't mean that uh, we are, uh, trans people are uh, not a lot of, uh, we are a lot of trans people in Turkey, but we are not visible. The politics uh, LGBT in Turkey, 
LGBTI plus activist politics, it's not uh, diverse, I think. It's not diverse, especially for the trans people. And in my social life, uh, I have, uh, I get too much harassment in, in streets or in, in cars, in taxi or in metro or something. Uh, it's these sad things that the police is uh, giving a harassment for the uh, trans people because the police, police is the uh, first people when I was, a, uh, I get a violence experience or something, I first call them, but they are, they are transphobics, they are misogynists, they are homophobics, uh, they, uh, they have a, a violence experience about these things. Uh, they are not safe, I think. Security in Turkey, not safe. <laughs> um, it's sad, I think. And also uh, we have uh, discriminations in hospitals or state things or something public, public uh, states. Uh, we have discrimination, especially trans people because trans people more visible than the other LGBT, LGBTI plus uh, people. Um, in my social life, I have uh, a little, uh, a, a, a few trans, uh, a few um, best friends because I think that uh, this is more secure for me because LGBTI plus activists in Turkey um, and <clears throat> not diverse also doesn't understand the trans women's or trans binaries problems. Doesn't understand that and doesn't, don't wanna see that or something. Um, I have a few friends, uh, uh, there, there's a harassment or bullying is uh, in LGBTI plus activists. It's, uh, too sad, I think, but uh, I think our rage is the cis heterosexuals or the states or the some things, but we uh, show to each other the other rage, and it's making a harassment, bullying, or something in our community. It's sad, I think, but. Uh, I, I, I'll survive and I survived <laughs> about it. Um, sometimes uh, we try to uh, protect ourselves. There's a solidarity. Yes, we, I, I accept that there's a, too much solidarity in LGBTI community, but uh, also we have bullying and harassment. We are not uh, pure. Oh, this phobies or this harassment or something. But we have uh, a strong solidarity. Our community have strong solidarity. Also, as as a woman, uh, we have we are uh, as feminists in Turkey has a strong strong solidarity. We as women in Turkey, uh, we are too strong. I think both from this conversation and the film, it really, uh, we can really tell that you are such a strong character. Um, and I'm really sorry to hear about kind of the internal transphobia within the LGBTI plus community. Um, myself, I'm studying in the UK and the film festival is based in the UK. And unfortunately here as well, there's a lot of transphobia and there are a lot of LGB groups that are openly transphobic and a lot of fem feminist groups as well. So I guess even though England is a European country, this, um, this things like that still exist. But this brings me to my last question. Um, could you talk a little bit about, you know, at the beginning of the conversation, you mentioned that you are part Kurdish and part Ala 
Al Alani, right? I couldn't understand, sorry. Sorry, um, in the beginning of our conversation, you said that you're eth eth ethnically, you're Kurdish? Yeah. Yeah, and that you're a neo-pagan, is that, yeah, sorry. Um, could you tell us a little bit about kind of the intersectional barriers faced by some trans people in Turkey based on their sort of religion, their ethnic background, and also maybe their geographical location? Mm -hmm. In Turkey, the privileged ethnicity is Turkish and Sunni Muslim. The, this identity is privileged and as a, a bisexual, trans woman, Alevi, Kurdish, uh, feminist, vegan, I have a disadvantaged uh, identities in Turkey. It's hard to uh, face all of them, face too much discrimination in Turkey. Uh, um, and also, <clears throat> Uh, it you give, give me a strength uh, because I have a little bit privilege in Turkey, uh, uh, but my most of identity is that this advantage in Turkey, and it's hard to face all of them. It's hard to face all of them: racism, uh, discrimination. Uh, misogynia, biphobia, homophobia, transphobia, all of them, it's hard to face them. Uh, but it gave me a strength. Uh, uh, when I was a child, uh, my mom told me that when I go to school, don't tell anyone that you are Kurdish, don't tell anyone that you are Alevi, uh, because uh, we can get a discrimination about it. Uh, in the history of Turkey, uh, there is a too much uh, um, genocide. Uh, for example, Armenian genocide. For example, Alevi genocide. For example, Kurdish genocide. We we still have this, unfortunately. Um, and um, for example, Ale Alevi people, the history. Uh, the Sunni radical Islamist uh, burned a hotel uh, into a fest. It means uh, Maraj, sorry, Madamak suicide, uh, genocide. Uh, approximately the um, 60 people, 60 Alevi people uh, died by burned in this hotel or something. Sometimes the radical Islamists uh, give a, a cross to Alevi's um, doors, outdoors, to uh, their mention that you are Alevi and you will die, like that. And uh, in, in 1938, uh, in 1938, uh, there there is a genocide in Darsim. Uh, I'm from Darsim, actually. My ethnicity is from Darsim. Uh, the war fly, war flights uh, give a, give a bombs to the Darsim, and there is a big genocide for uh, Alevi Kurd people in Darsim. Uh, they told that the Munzur River in Darsim, it, it's, there was all full of blood. The river was uh, red, they told us. And this is a near times, but we have also these discriminations, uh, not uh, like bombs, not like genocide, but we have a discrimination from government mm -hmm. all, all the time from the Ottoman Empire, the Kurdish people, Armenian people, we have always discrimination. Yes. Um, uh, thank you very much for sharing um, your story, but also the kind of the very traumatic 
historical background to both to kind of your identities as a um, trans bisexual ethnic minority woman in Turkey. Um, I'm just going to see um, if uh, we have any questions from the mm -hmm. uh, from the viewers. If you want to ask a question, you can post it below. Oh, yes, there is a, one question. What advice? Um, what advice do you have for a young LGBT person in Turkey and the Middle East? What advice do you, I have? <laughs> Um, patient, I think patient is the more more important thing, and solidarity, solidarity. We have uh, mm, we have uh, I forget name, Danek, SGK, social places <laughs> uh, in Turkey. We can call them to ask a help, ask for help, and. We go to the community places like we we can uh, go to the uh, lambda or uh, civil uh, civil communities or something. Uh, we have a lot of sources, a lot of psychological uh, a lot of sources in Turkey. Uh, I can advise that and passion, <laughs> passion. I think uh, the most important thing and uh, hope i think hope, hope give me a strength i i, I have a hope to uh, we have in turkey we have more beautiful uh, more better lives in turkey um i think that's it <laughs> hope um i definitely um um I think hope is very important and you seem like such a hopeful person. And there is another, somebody else asked saying, um, thank you so much, Iris. You're such an inspiration. Um, I love the documentary. I, I agree with what this person is saying. And from the documentary, I didn't understand you're Kurdish. Is that something you chose? Did, so was it intentional that you didn't speak about your Kurdish identity in the um, documentary? Uh-huh. Uh, hmm. Okay, I I, I understand. Uh, I didn't choose that. Uh, I didn't choose that. Uh, for uh, not saying Kur I am Kurdish. Uh, it, it's a spontaneous thing. Uh, that I don't tell about. Uh, my ethnicity. Ethnicity. Uh, but uh, I always said that in my. Uh, reviews uh, or uh, documents or something i always said that i'm kurdish because uh, i'm proud of it great thank you so much i think there's i think there's no more questions um once again let me thank you for giving up your time to talk to us uh, from on my behalf and on behalf of the um, qti coalition in cambridge um, if anyone hasn't seen Iris the documentary film yet, please uh, go to Queer Kanji Film Festival website and um, see the film before tomorrow evening. Bye bye. I'm oh, yeah. so thankful. <laughs> I'm so thankful uh, because this conversation, because uh, uh, and for this live stream, and uh, I was so excited. Sorry for my uh, bad English, also. <laughs> And thank you. <laughs> thank you for QTI Coalition, especially. Thanks. It was also very exciting for me to meet you. And your English was really good. And thank you so <laughs> thank much. You. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.